All right, and we're back after a quick break. So um, let's jump back into it and do the uh, the operand decoding for these different types. So for example, let's do U first. Um, No, that's not right. So in this case, what are the things we're decoding? RD is already decoded, so we only have to decode the additional thing, which is the immediate. And we are going to not do this because it's already in the right position, so we just have to clear the lower bits. Um, which I guess would be like this. Maybe we will do a mask for that. I guess the lower, no, 12, it would be 12, right? So there's 12, 7 plus 5. Um, so this has all, has 12 lower bits set, and so if we flip it, I guess that would be it. Um, something like that. Or maybe I'll call it something a little more explanatory. Um, J is party time and a half because it has sliced up and permuted bits. Let's do another one first. Uh, R has nothing to decode, it looks like. Did we actually? I guess that's something we didn't do down here. Uh, we didn't. No, so these don't need further decoding because they get their things from fixed slots. I needs further decoding. Um, Um, Okay, this is wrong as well. Um, these need to be shifted, of course.
I guess if I define this first, then I can actually use it in both directions. Actually, there's no reason to do this. I can just do uh, shift it over and then mask it. What was the shift? 15. It doesn't sound right. Twenty five, right? Could actually write it like this now that the president's is right, but why not? Why uh Let's see. Chunk seven starts at bit twenty five, starts at twelve. RD starts at seven. RS one starts at fifteen and at twenty, so Yeah, I'm not completely sure about some of this stuff, but uh, let's see. So, Anyway, so this doesn't require coding. I'll clean it up. I, let's do I. So, um, let's create a function called signed. Which, despite the fact that it's a reserved word in C, is no problem for us because of the way we do the prefixing. Um, and so I think what you want to say is for let's see. So I I starts at twenty. Oh, so it's already in the right position for sign extension, which is convenient. 
because it means if we just do an arithmetic right shift, um, This is expressed a little bit awkwardly. Maybe the better way to express it is there's 20 bits on, and then we shift it over. Then here we can say there are 12 bits on, and we shift it over. Is that right? I think so. Um, and then here you can. Um, I am mask yeah yeah let's not do this conversion it's a little too clever let's just do it like this So you isolate that field, and this is where you rely on implementation to find behavior, but what it, what is, unless someone corrects me on chat, this gives, on all platforms I think I care about, this gives an arithmetic redshift. So then we, um, this gives us sign extension. And we have to convert it back. Because basically the idea is that the sign bit is already in the right position, so when we right shift it, it smears it over the bits we're shifting over. So it's just a matter of putting this down 20 bits. I think that's it. Um, for S, um, for S, I guess we it's sort of a two-parter, um, and so those are So that's seven bits, I guess. I guess that's five bits. Five plus seven is 12. And they start, I guess, seven bits to the right. I guess you really want to have a, a thing here. I'll be explicitly typed just to be clear. Uh, 
Um, no, I guess for this mask. Maybe I do want it, but I'll just put it like that for now. Uh, and so I guess I want S M high shift. No, I want it to be shifted down to f by t by twenty, right? And if I do that, I will smear over all the other bits. Then I have to shift this over by seven. But I think that's how I want to do it. So actually, I don't need a mask at all. I can just do. I can do this. Um, and then combine that with. Something like that. So let's see if that makes sense. So for S, we take these and we shift it and smear it over to position across all but the lowest five bits. So everything we shift over gets overridden by the sign bit. And then left over is just, I guess, RS2 essentially, but now we're going to overwrite that with the lower, in the, the low immediate part. So we just have to mask that out and shift it over. So if this is five bits. Um, seven bits. No, it shouldn't be so. Seven minus five is. No, it has to be shifted all the way down, of course. So I think that is seven. But we have, but at least with the way we define those constants, we will shift. Um, we will shift and then mask. Uh, CSR JB. Let's do those branch instructions, even though they're quite annoying. Um, okay, let's see if anyone has some, some great insights in the chat. Hey Fabian or, or Sean or anyone who knows, um, are there any platforms where in C where the C compiler does not do an arithmetic right shift if you do it on um, if you do it on assigned integer? I know that it's not guaranteed by the standard. The standard says it's implementation defined, but do you know of a practical compiler where that 
happens that way. Seen on pre-alpha SDK. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure that had some fun side effects in people's code. All right, that's reassuring. Um, this is honestly more like solving, I don't know, this, whenever I have to do this sort of thing, like compactly, like a bunch of it in, in two hours back to back, this thing uh, breaks my brain more way, more, way more than normal coding, just keeping all the numbers straight and making sure you don't screw up. Of course, we're going to test it uh, soon, but um, yeah, this is some fatigue inducing shit. All right, so Jay. By the way, once we get to the hardware uh, design language portion of of the series, you'll see how much easier this stuff is because all HDLs have really good support for bit slicing and bit slice concatenation and stuff like that. Um, oh, decode S, let's see. So let me take it one part at a time. This thing already has the signed bit in the right position, so I cast it to a signed int and then do the shift. And so this should smear it there. Uh, I think you need to shift left the high part again. Hmm. Really? I thought for S. The sign bit that we, well, or the thing we want to treat as the sign bit for sign extension is already in the highest position. So I don't think I need to left shift, right? I think I can just smear it over directly. Um, and of course, then I have to move the lower immediate part over to, con to, 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 to slot into the lowest five bits. You need to left shift because you're producing a 12. But I think this thing is already shifted by the right amount. Because this, the high, the high shift is not the full, the high shift is, oh, so maybe, so how many high bits are there? Let's see again. So there's seven high bits, and I'm shifting by 20. So there's oh, I see what you're saying. Because I'm oaring in the the old lower bits. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yep, yep. I, I'm I'm with you now. There, I still have the what you might call it. I still have the RS2 junk that's going to get ored in with the uh, lower immediate because this thing is residual from that. All right, I'm with you now. Um, so the, yeah, the easier the easier way to do it is just to do it all the way. So 32 minus, uh, just do the full 25 shift and then shift back by um, Gotcha. I think there should be a nice way to express this. Um, I guess I'll just write, maybe write it like this, just to keep the lines a little less, a little less cluttered. Um,
All right. I am with you now. Um, all right, B, which looks even more fun. Um, so B, bit seven is actually bit 11. Um, I'm going to not be super optimal about this because otherwise I'm going to make big mistakes probably. Um, so By the way, this has the right presidents before anyone uh, mentions it. Um, so this is bit 11. Oh, this is awkward. I think I'm just going to decode the field separately and recompose them rather than trying to do fancy relative shifts in an optimal way, because otherwise it's going to get out of control. So I'm just going to decode the field separately uh, and then worry about efficiency later. Um, so like for the 12-bit, I'm just going to say... So let's see, shift down by 25. Um, shift down by 25 and isolate the six bits. Um, Yes, shift down by eight and isolate. So this is five bits. We are taking four of them, I suppose. And then we're going to recompose these. To the sign extension after this. This is just the unsigned part. Um,
I guess just to be very explicit, let me write this as unsigned. Um, and then It's still 12 bits, right? No, it's not 12. It's actually 13 because it, there's an implicit, because of the instruction alignment, there's an implicit bottom bit of zero. So I don't shift over by 20. I shift over by 19, I think. Um, and then I shift back by 19. And I make it back. Ugh. Probability of this kind of code being right is very low. All right. This, by the way, in, in case, so you saw the idiom where I was only smearing right. Most of the time, if you're if you're using arithmetic redshift to do sign extension, for example, if you have a byte you want to sign extend to a 32-bit word, you, you would typically use this kind of technique where you first, you, you do what looks like a, a no-op, but because of the, the arithmetic redshift, it's actually not a no-op. Well, yeah, it, sh it fills in the upper bits with ones if it's a signed byte, for example. But anyway, so that's the thing we're doing there. We didn't need to do the the we didn't need to do the left shift in the other cases because the sign bit was already in the right position, so we could just do a start with a right shift, arithmetic right shift. Um, alrighty. And yeah, this is the extra stream. J. J is even, well, the immediate field is at least initially consecutive. Um, this is JAL, right, right, right. So this also has an implicit lowest bit for the instruction alignment reasons. Um, I mean, let's just do the same thing here, I guess. That's, ah, uh, this is so annoying. Um, yeah, whatever. Uh, data. So, so obnoxious. So 12, uh, okay, so these start at the right position. So the 19th bit, I guess, because these are kind of naturally, like it says 12 here in the absolute position and this starts counting. And so I guess this would be no, 20, right? And then uh, 
Oh, this is annoying. Is there another... So I don't have to do all this mental math to... Uh, This is much easier to read. So anyway, it is 20. And this thing is 21. Um, and there's nine of them. No, there's 10 actually because it's inclusive. Then there's 12 to 19. Hmm. How things are going when uh, I can't do that math. I'm so. This is one of the things when I started doing hardware stuff. The fact that everyone counts with inclusive upper bounds always throws me off because I'm used to subtracting the upper and lower bound to to calculate the length of a range. So in this case, I was saying there's, you know, there's seven bits, but it's actually eight bits. Uh, all right. Um, and then let us do the dance again. Shift that over by one. Um, So first we have to shift it over. It's already in that position. So it's we, we don't have to shift it over by 12. I guess we have to shift it over by 11, right? Because it's twelve bits of data, it's twenty bits of data, but it's twenty-one bits of stuff we're setting directly because of the implicit zero bit at the bottom. All right, where are my proofreaders? What mistakes did I make here? <sighs> I could also have used this table. You know what, I'm temp temp tempted to re-implement in this style where I do um,
Let's throw everything out. So this was for J. Um, okay, let's not throw everything out. Let's write it in parallel. Maybe I'll use this style, which I think is easier to reason about. So for J, You know what? We already did it. I'm going to revisit that later. I don't want to screw with it right now. Um, is that it except for the CSR? So we have U, which is pretty simple. J. Let's see here. Okay, we haven't done CSR yet. Which has a kind of un unsigned extended immediate. So it's a 5-bit unsigned extended immediate. Um, which Um, I guess since there's no other immediate in this case, the easy way to do that is to just say, um, fill it in as if it was unsigned extended. So it's, um, just like that. And so we will fill this in even for the non-immediate instructions. But once once we're doing instruction dispatch, for example, if the instruction is not an immediate style of thing, it doesn't matter what the immediate field contains. So th this way, we don't have to do any further dispatch. That seems reasonable. Um, in fact, this is so simple. We maybe should just um, put it down here rather than keeping it separate. Alrighty. Um, so at this point, we could write maybe a simple simulator, which may or may not support all the instructions immediately, but um, you could also write the encoder to go along with it, but I feel kind of like I want to see something. Even if the instruction encoding is busted, at least we can probably get something out of it for now. Um, and so let's define, I guess, the state of a of a hardware thread, which in RISC-V terminology is called a heart. Don't ask me why. It's a cute acronym or abbreviation, I guess. Abbreviation. Um, so we have 32 registers. Now zero is a kind of a fake register, zero register, but we will still, in order to keep the array indexing simple, we will still keep it there in the array. Um, and then we'll have a program counter. And that's probably enough to get started. Um, as long as we don't do loads and stores and stuff. And we'll stuff in the other things as we need them. Um, so maybe we will start with uh, function step. Yeah, zero register is a sync. You can you can you can you can choose to treat it as a sync either on the read side or the write side. What I've done in the past is treat it as a um, a, a a sync on the write side because writes are less frequent than reads basically. 
but as long as it's always zero or you know you, you can arrange for it to work simply um, all right so we have a program counter so we're going to read an instruction Um, and we're going to decode the instruction. And now that we have the instruction, we'll just break out some of the fields, I guess. Might as well. Um, There's all kinds of stuff we should do here once we get a little more serious, like we need to detect invalid uh, instruction fetches. We need to detect uh, illegal uh, instructions here and dispatch to a, uh, you know, a, a, an exception handler and all that stuff. But for now, I'm just going to assume that these things succeed. Um, okay, so, um, the decoding was very nasty, but by isolating it like this, uh, you should hopefully see the, the payoff, which is that the actual uh, simulator itself will almost read like pseudocode if you write it, if you write it in the proper style. Um, oh, and, and the other thing we could do here is, um, I mean, we could even, I'm just gonna do that, to break that out as well. Um, you can read these. You can do this unconditionally because these fields are always guaranteed to only be five bits wide. So even for instructions for which uh, these fields are not really meaningful, we can still do this read. It will just be useless. Um, and so let's go to our instruction list and just go through. Okay, does not quite work as well as, uh, but you know what? You know what we can do is we can do. I thought the shortcut is, yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, load, load up for immediate. So we've already done all the work of actually making a clean immediate operand. Um, and so load up for immediate is kind of, shouldn't be a big deal at this point. You should be able to just do, um, to do this. Um, and for uh, add upper immediate to program counter, um, you will, um, and you, I think you'll just do this. Um, for JL, the semantics of JL is you jump to a certain offset. Um, First, let's, um, because we're dealing with word size instructions, the next PC by default is PC plus four. But I think we also want what I will call PC plus immediate. And this is going to be, well, it will be conceptually, it will be conceptually assigned addition, but it, it's still valid to do it as unsigned arithmetic. So I'll do it as unsigned arithmetic. So I don't have to do conversions for no good reason. Um, but this will basically be 
um, write the next PC, which is the, the return address. So if, if we're doing a JAL, this is typically something like a call, uh, but can be used for other things where you don't, where you can just set the RD to, to X0. But <clears throat> in a case like this, um, you write the next PC, which is the sequential instruction where if you're doing a return or something like that, this is where you want to go. And then um, you set the next PC to, um, what do you call it? You set the next PC to branch PC. And you can actually say branch PC for this as well. It's the same computation. JALR is basically the same thing, but rather than sourcing the next PC, um, let's go and look. It's sourcing it from a register, but let me just check the specifics of um, right it's it's not a relative branch uh, And you have to, oh yeah, this is, I think, something I made a bug. I remember this bug from my first try, this is a year ago, uh, but my first time trying to do a RISC-V core was um, how to have this bug, which is that I didn't zero out the least significant bit. There's a really nice trick here where they basically make sure you never have to deal with unaligned instructions because if things start out as being aligned with the program counter, all their control flow instructions ensure they stay aligned basically. And for some things, it just happens as a side effect of, you know, the immediate operand, that's the branch offset, always being even by having that implicit zero. But in the case where you're computing the target from an instruction, it just zeroes out the least significant bit as part of the semantics. But it means that you never have to detect it, basically. Um, so let's see. Next PC is then um, RS1Val plus immediate. Um, R is one val plus immediate, and then like the zeroing out the lowest bit. Um, okay, uh, branch of equal if R is one val is R is two val, then next PC is branch PC. Um, here we, these are signed, so we have to um, treat these as signed. These are the unsigned counterparts. Load byte, this is the signed variant that does sign extension. So, um, Write reg uh, to RD. I'm just going to see loads load signed byte from heart and um, you take an address and I think for for these loads it's the uh, RS1 plus immediate right yeah so RS1 val plus immediate. And this is the same thing here, but with a uh, half word. 
and this is no particular signage, signage, <laughs> signedness. Um, Probably these should not be. I would I'll do the I'll do it that way. Is the same thing here, just with uh, without sign extension. Typo inline ranch. Yeah, okay. Um, store register or store store byte. So. Um, here there's no destination register, but you have um, basically a sum of two registers and an immediate offset on top of it. Let's see, just to... Oh no, what am I talking about? RS, RS2 is the source, so it's RS2 val, it's RS1 plus immediate, right? So it's uh, store byte, um, and it's RS1 val plus immediate, and the thing we're storing is RS2 val. Then there's all these instructions. Um, so write register uh, RS1 val plus immediate. Sorry, all of these needs the hard as an argument. Um, or or and um, this is the the shift amount I'm trying to remember I guarantee that it's no wider than let me let me just verify it but I should guarantee that it's no wider than uh, Right, RD. That can't be right. Let me go and look at that again. So this was S L L I. It's RS2. I think this is also wrong. Do this, and then you say, if this is not the case, then you say this is an illegal op because it's already been set up here.
but with that caveat, we should be good for these guys. Um, so this is a right shift. Um, this should be that's fine. Now for the ads. Um, same idea. With the caveat that there's a shift mask. Do we already have something like that? Actually, let me put it down here. I guess it's really more specific to, even though it's similar to stuff in the encoding, it's really something uh, we're using here for the semantics, not for the decoding. Um, so basically, this is to make sure when we were using, when we were doing the shift with the immediate operands, the decoding had already made sure that they were no no wider than you know at, at, at five bits at most, right? Um, but here, since it's sourced from a register, we can't know in advance what it is, and we have to mask it according to the semantics. Um, and then this is a signed thing like this. This is the unsigned counterpart. This is the XOR. This is the mask again. Just the same thing, but arithmetically. E call um, let's just create some functions. Um, okay, let's do these CSR things. Someone's asking, is it a RISC-V emulator or a RISC-V compiler? I mean, it's not a compiler. Um, right now we have essentially the start of the emulator, uh, but the decoder is also could be useful for a disassembler, for example. Um, and you could have started with the assembler, but then you would have the reverse problem of what you tested on. So I just chose to start with this, since I think it shows the elegance of the separation is that if you isolate the decoding to this kind of ugly thing that takes ugly bit-oriented data and makes it into a nice data structure, then your simulator can essentially look like pseudocode like this. Um, and so this is probably like once I get this kind of, once I, and this won't be, I, we won't be able to test the whole thing, but I'll be able to get some basic instructions running through it and people can see it doing something useful and then I'll probably stop the stream, but that will hopefully be a little self-contained to stream pairing. Um, so let me just finish that off and I will show you. So control status registers, CSR, read, write.
So let's see, the CSR is 12 bits. I guess we should put that in the, where did we do the instruction definition? Here. Um, Um, so we will do read the CSR, write reg, art rd, CSR val, and by the way, this kind of thing you definitely cannot pre-read outside of the loop because reading and writing CSRs has side effects. Just like reading and writing memory kind of side effects through all kinds of stuff, memory mapped IO or just memory errors. Um, well, writing obviously has side effects, but even reading can have side effects. Um, reads the old value, writes it to RD. Um, the initial value in RS1 is written to the CSR. Um, write CSR, CSR, RS1 val. Let's see. Reads the old value. Zero extension. Let's not worry about that. It's done by the routine. Writes it to RD. So read the CSR value, write it to RD, and then write RS1 val to, um, to the CSR. If I see, so we should only write, so only, so here we can't just rely on the sort of dev null effect of, um, like write reg itself is normally handles the fact that if you write to zero, it doesn't do anything, for example. Um, but here, because there's a side effect associated with it, we actually have to guard it manually. That makes sense. Um, atomic read and set bits. It looks like this one unconditionally reads because part of its point is to write something that requires knowing the old value. Um, so you read the old value and then you, I think, mask it by rs one val. The initial value in this treat is a bit mask and specifies to be set, so I have to OR it. Any bit that is high in RS1 will cause that corresponding bit to be set, if that bit is writable. Um, I think 
we have to write that back before we modify it. And then we have to write this back afterwards. Let's do it like this. Read the old value, write it to the destination register. So here we do it unconditionally because there's a read modify write. So we have to always know the value in order to execute the operation. Whereas here, there's actually no dependency on the of the new value and the old value. That's why we it's it's it can be guarded. Um, but here that's not the case. Um, and then let's see, write back this with the value or with ours one. Yeah, that seems correct. And then the other one is the complementary clear kind of thing. Um, the initial value, blah, 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 treat as a bit to be cleared. So if it's one, then it gets cleared, which means we should be ending with the complement. So I think it's the same thing, but we should be ending with the complement. No, because the old values, let me think. Uh, zero extends writes to blah blah blah. The initial value in engine register R is one bit mass that specifies what, what is to be cleared. So we, we don't want to touch them in their old positions. So we have to preserve we have to preserve the old values. So we have to do this classic C is R val um, like preserve the old values. I guess that is right, actually, now that I think about it. Any bit that's high in this will cause the correspondence to be cleared if that bit is writable. So let me think. If we flip the mask and end it, then all the other bits are preserved. So it's, yeah, so that is actually correct. Um, Oh. Okay, so if RS is X0, then the restructuring will not write to the CSR at all, so it's not cause any of the side effects might otherwise occur on a CSR write, such as blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's how I'm reading that. It's not about whether the value is zero, it's about whether the register is, you know, the X zero register. I guess we need to do this too here. But they don't really specify um, yeah sure we haven't written that yet um, let's just stub this in and then for for read reg, um, so we will do these reads unconditionally, but then on the right side, um, we will only write if it's non zero. And then we also had <laughs> sorry, so I have to get these two. I still make this mistake sometimes. So we also need these for uh, 
byte and half word. Let's do the sign extension right now. I'm not going to have any CSRs initially, so this is just going to act like a no op. Um, okay, let's do these immediate variants. Don't need we don't need these yet. I mean, this for, for this to be useful, we need more infrastructure anyway that we don't have in this simple processor. So I think this is fine. Um, okay, we have to do some stuff after this routine. The main thing is just um, updating the program counter because we have this next PC thing. Writing the code this way probably introduces too much register pressure, but um, whatever. Um, guess we need to do some at least simple instruction encoder. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Fuck it. <sighs> yes, let's just do it. Let us just do it. Uh, we don't have loading and saving right now, but um, let's wait for a second to do that. Well, and this needs to be, well, we definitely need this. Um, let's do something simple-minded. Um, Oh, 
which is just a big array of these. Um, if adder plus or is less than heart memlet. Else, it just returns zero. Well, I mean, I could just find a binary file, but I'm not sure if I have enough infrastructure yet to support it. Let me just um, let me just finish the load and store stuff. This is, by the way, assuming the host processor can do unaligned um, unaligned uh, memory reads and writes here. I guess actually this would be three. Let me think. Plus zero should be less than. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it should be. It should be like this. Because in this case, it's already. It's going to keep using this pointer arithmetic style just to be consistent. Um, and this would be plus This up out of the way is kind of utility. Um, byte one. Plus two. It's not ready. It's plus one. Um, let's see here. Could download the assembler, build an image, but I don't know if there's anything that's so anemic in terms of its requirements that um, that I would be able to run it. Yeah. 
don't want to deal with that right now. We're, I'm going to maybe work on that off stream to get some better stuff st st stood up in terms of uh, external tests. Um, yeah, random dude on the chat. Uh, feel free to, if if you have like a binary image or you have like a C or a C style array that initializes a bunch of, uh, that I can use to initialize memory. That's really what I need. I need a way to initialize memory with something that we can test with. I mean, I could do it by, by, an, by hand, but that would not be useful beyond a few simple instructions. Uh, I could also do the instruction encoder, but that's going to be another, well, it would be easy for the easy cases um, let's see here. I mean, I could do something very simple if people want to see it. I guess the first thing that would might that that might be useful is um, print art state. Just for debugging. Probably we should print more on the same line. Um, yeah, let's just do that. That's a little too much. Definitely need to put that on. Um, That was the wrong kind of alignment. Um, I guess we don't really want that there. <laughs> it's also not 32, it's 8. Um, This is not what they're actually called officially, but this way we get some kind of alignment. 
potentially. Oh, this is bullshit. Doesn't really help. Um. I guess I'll just do it like that for now. Mm. Kind of just want to do the instruction encoder, but I need to have lunch. So I might just call the stream, even though this is, I haven't really been able to test it properly, but um, don't want to just faff around with third party binaries because they probably make a bunch of assumptions that for, for uh, stuff I don't have. And so it's just going to be a debugging nightmare. Um, yeah, I think I would rather just, uh, I think I'm just going to break for lunch and uh, I'll work on this in my spare time or that's you know i'll work on this later today after lunch and um we'll we'll work on the instruction encoder which is not going to be interesting because it's going to be a mirror i mean a mirror in most ways of the encoder i won't work on the assembler part which is more interesting from an engineering perspective the encoder is not very interesting it's literally just the same thing in reverse uh, and very tedious um and I will also work on getting some test binaries ready to go from third parties so we can actually validate that uh, that our encoding is correct. But yeah, so I think I'm going to break for stream now. Um, this is sometimes what stuff feels like. Um, the decoding is just is what it is. It's pretty pretty nasty work. Uh, I think people can see hopefully that um, the actual execution code is very straightforward in the stuff we've written it. If you write for so, sometimes you're tempted to write this sort of stuff where you intermingle the decoding and the execution and it gets pretty gnarly especially for a format like this which is not intended to be software decodable very easily so anyway i'm going to break for lunch uh next stream we will have a lot more stuff to show because i will have written a bunch of stuff off screen to actually test everything and a bunch of other tools to visualize the state and and whatnot um but anyway yeah so uh thanks for hanging out uh and see you everyone next stream